Welcome once again to DSTV Roundtable with me, Donovan Goliath. Um, and seated next to me is the incredible Nolwazi. I want to know is yes. your character you play on oh. Nzaluwami and how far that is from Nolwazi and if at some point do you bring that character into your daily life in Jay? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, Swangile steals, um, steals a baby, mm -hmm. right? A newborn, <clears throat> basically. Yeah. Um, so she was pregnant, she loses a baby. Um, and a car accident, and then another woman gives birth. They bump into each other at Park Station, and in a split second, she decides, I'm taking your baby, and flees to KZN. Um, episode two, we now pick up 20 years later, and um, the child now wants to move to, to Johannesburg. Um, so Smongler from then onwards pretty much starts losing her mind because she's now afraid that if this child moves to Johannesburg, she might find her real parents, right? And she's lied, she's got married. So, I mean, her story is that um, the, mo the mother threw the baby away and she, you know, saved the baby. And then there's another story where she's saying, oh, she was beaten up by her boyfriend and then she fled. So it's like, it's an absolute mess. So she just now, decides I'm going to save my family. But every decision she makes is questionable. Almost to the point of insanity. You know what I mean? Like she, there is not a single thing she says, even from the first episode that you can really She's believe. She's the mastermind of the mess. Base, you know what I mean? Like with every single thing. Now, um, I mean, like at first glance, I wanted to judge her because like just of like, I mean, stealing someone's baby. It's like, come on, you know what I mean? It's like, come on, like w w there's no possible excuse. And then now afterwards, now trying to prevent the child from finding out the truth. But then now I start thinking about it. You've, she, she has created this relationship with her daughter, Undogozo, um, she also has a husband, so they have a family unit now. Um, and how much we as people, we, how much we would do, the lengths we would go to, to protect our families, you know what I mean? To protect the ones that we love or, you know what I mean? Or even our comfortability and what, you know, what familiarity, like we don't want to, to lose that. It's almost like it becomes a source of our sanity. Once that is compromised or once you lose that, you know what I mean? It's like even you start, you know what I mean? You're not 100% okay. Um, so now I should have just started really personalizing it as a mother. Um, I mean, as much as my children aren't stolen from anyone, um, but I don't know if there is a single person who would 100% keep, you know what I mean, like on sort of legal lines to protect their children or their family, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I feel like there's a lot of us who would make decisions to anyone that would be questionable because of that. And I think that that's one thing that possibly most of us have in common with her, right? Mm. I mean, but uh, is she a good person? Oh, I'm not 100% sure. But she's 100% fun to play because it was actually so interesting that on set, as much as we all knew the story, mm. it's like, um, it's called Cut, and everyone would be like, oh, Smongile is nuts. Like, what is she doing? It was almost shocking every single time as she unraveled, like, this woman so is... So fun. That's like, so fun. exactly, no. you know what I mean? So, like, it, every single time, like, a conversation would ensue on set because it's like, you know what I mean? Now we're all trying to figure out why would she make this decision? And this is literally every single day. Um, so that I find exciting about it. I mean, I, I don't know if we have much in common, but I, I admire her fearlessness. Like she's, she's strong, like she's, you know what I mean? Like she, 
I, she walks in literally like her energy fills the room. You turn and you look at her even without her saying anything. Always in control, always composed throughout every single lie. You know what I mean? Like, and, and I, I love that about her, man. I think, uh, yay to Smongulous insanity. <laughs> there was a moment there where you're like, yeah, I, I could be a bit of a spoon. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I have a feeling my husband would think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get him on the, should we call him? Yeah, I think if you called him, he'd be like, mm, yeah, she's also a bit insane. But um, yeah, yeah so Smongulous, Smongulous out there, I love her. I want to know from you, Nolazi, yeah. what does it feel like moving from behind the scenes to on camera? Oh man, can I tell you, like, it really feels like I'm back home because this is where I started, maybe what, 15, 16, 17 years ago, I can't remember. Um, and then moved very quickly behind the scenes. It was very comfortable there. Um, then spent like the whole of 2020 really working on myself, now me. Um, then started shooting Mzaliwami towards the end of 2020. So it almost like, felt like, a celebration of like all the work that I put into mm. myself, you know what I mean? Like it was really cool. Um, also with a character as insane as Smongile, which is really nice. I think because my face looks really young. Um, previously I was always cast in like the Swedish roles, you know what I mean? So like it's really cool to come back with um, very manipulative, calculating woman, you know, very combative with every single decision that she makes, uh, the mastermind of like all of the mess that pretty much as you will see. Um, so that's what it feels like. It feels, feels, feels like home. That's what it feels like. Feel, you know what I'm I mean? Gonna, I'm gonna use that. A mastermind yeah. of all of the mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. incredible. Exactly. This is a bit of a deep question, a bit of a serious okay. question. And, uh, but I think you're ready for this. Mm. What have you learned about human trafficking? Uh, being a part wow. of the show. Um, I mean, first of all, that it's an important story to tell. Yes. Um, there was a time where, I think over the past year or two, where literally on social media you would see a girl disappearing nearly every single day. Yes. And it was really Almost scary. every time you swat, you, you, exactly. slew, you, you re refresh your feed, yeah. Yeah, so it's beautiful that we get to tell this story. Um, you know what I mean? Tell stories that really speak to what is currently happening. You yes. know what I mean? So we can have those uh, conversations on a wider scale. Um, because I mean, like as much as we have them on social media, but the amount of people there are like a percentage of a percentage if you think about, you know what I mean? Like the population, general population of South Africa. So um, now that it's on TV, it'll force us to have those conversations and to be extra vigilant, you know what I mean? Like, yes. see, beginning of the year, parents posting bundle of joy, school badge, you know, on social media. It's like, okay, maybe that's not such a great idea. Mm. You know what I mean? So then you start thinking and processing those decisions even more. Live your life more consciously. Exactly. About what you're putting out there. Exactly, you know what I mean? Even what do you say about yourself, you know, um, having your location on all the time on mm. your phone. Yes. You know what I mean? Just. Simple thing as leaving the house to go to the store and sharing your location with mm. someone. You know what mm. I mean? Mm. It's quite sad that we actually now have to think of those things. Mm. But it's also important for us to have those conversations openly <laughs> um, because that is now the world that we live in. You know mm. what I mean? We can choose to be ignorant or vigilant. You know what I mean? And I think we really need to not start okay. taking even more, even more care um, when it comes to those things. So, but also the beautiful thing about this story, what I love is that it's being told from the perspective of women. Mm. Um, and you know what I mean? And women for so long have been seen as like the lovers, the caregivers, the nurturers of the mm. home. But when stories are told about families, mm. women usually are like in the back seat. you know what I mean? Um, and it's usually still told from the perspective of a man. So I love that. Um, subverting. <clears throat> exactly. Universe. Yeah, so I love that now it's very different. It's the women, the, the ones who have been really keeping the home alive and keeping things 
are moving who are now telling the story for themselves. From yeah. The yeah. Female characters. Well. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I think this is a story that needs to be told a bit more. Yeah. In a sense, because I was also having a conversation with my brother the other day, and we we were talking about how women are, are, are one of the most endangered species mm -hmm. in the world. In a sense, because the mere fact that they have to think about these things, protecting themselves yeah. when they are going to a shop. In a sense, I mean, yeah. a girl was uh, murdered for going to a post office. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, I've, there's so many plays that we've done about it. There's so many uh, 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 TV shows that we've done about it. There's so many songs being sung about it. And I think there's, there's something that we are, we are missing somehow yeah. That, yeah. that needs to change yeah. so that this reaches more ears. Yeah. And I think this is a very important subject. True. Yeah. Like, it's actually very scary because um, there's almost like a, a shame that's attached to women's um, sort of sexuality and sensuality, mm. right? From a young age, you are taught to cover up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like to be ashamed of your body. You can't, you know, just be at peace and love your body and want to flaunt it because how dare you, you are enticing so-and-so, you know what I mean? Or you have to protect yourself because of the dangers that are around here. Mm. So, I mean, like, and those conversations you usually had behind closed doors. And now it's time that we actually brought them to the forum and actually started yeah. discussing and them. them. Well. Yeah, yeah, and the injustice. Really exactly. Raw. Like, yeah, like it's not okay mm. for yeah. any girl to already grow up sort of feeling ashamed of their body yeah. simply because of the way society operates. Yeah. It's not okay. It's and, like the behavior of men becoming the responsibility, responsibility. of women. Yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous. Mm. It's not the, wor so the worst that part now sense. that we're going through in lockdown, there were so many cases of. Um, little girls being raped at home by yeah. their fathers, by yeah. their uncles, by yeah. their actually relatives. Yeah. Yeah. To yeah. a point that like, where are these people, where exactly. are these kids supposed yeah. to yeah. Where's the for, safe for place? Help? Where, exactly. where do you go? And usually, what's it's the so first question? What were you wearing? Yeah, what were you wearing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What were you wearing? Yeah. yeah, that's usually you the first question. Up, down the road, they, they, they molest you, they, they swear to you. Why were you dressed up like yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. male so, privilege needs to be addressed. Exactly, yeah. so we sure. have to have these conversations. Yeah. We have to mm. now challenge patriarchy. Mm. Like we, we have, we just, there's no two ways about it. We just have to. And we have to be the generation that's going yeah, to be that brave, mm. brave enough to face it's like, it. It's like yeah. that quote, does art reflect society or does society reflect exactly. art? Exactly. Yeah. Mm. And the thing is, is that yeah. they... And they, how truthful are we as yeah. artists reflecting society yeah. mm. as well? Because I think patriarchy is a real thing. It's a real, real thing. And this conversation also is something that's really close to me because yeah. I've, 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 I've lost, you know, a lot of people who've gone through stuff like that, a couple of friends who, who were killed, you know, by, by, by these things. And I think it's, it's important for us as men as well to kind of like take ownership of these, mm. these things that are happening. Because I think most of the guys think it's far-fetched. And as in, most guys think uh, it, it's just wolf calling. I'll just call you names, and that's it. And as in, and yeah, you don't know, hey? you know, you don't know mm. how this, you, you don't know what your friend is thinking. Yes. And as in, you don't know what what his yeah. intentions are. Yes. And if you don't call him to order at that point, exactly. you know, as in, and exactly. you, you might have changed something. Ask yeah. any woman how they feel when they are walking and approaching a group of men. Mm. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's the most that, yeah. something as simple as just You're walking alert, eh? and approaching a group of men. It's mm. probably one of the scariest experiences ever. I'm, not, I'm an adult. I will still try and find a way to. to not cross that path. And not make eye contact as well. The thing about that is, you're walking towards them, but then you get past them and now your back exactly. is towards and them. So you don't know. No, yeah. you just keep it's walking. You terrifying. don't look behind. It's like Sodom and Gomorrah. It's you'll turn to a pillar of salt. Just carry it's on terrifying. walking. Look forward. It's terrifying. So you know what we're gonna do now? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk us out of this, but I want you to to yell, cut. Okay. We've got the scene. Okay. Right, can you do that? Because that's your vibe. Yeah, so you yeah. Were there, I, I right? can do that. I can do that. Hey, I'm nervous now. <laughs> you should be. I, She's I should the be, right? Mastermind yeah, behind the, the, the mastermind mess. behind the mess. I'm really brave. All right, I'm here we go. Ready. Thank you so much for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. Please make sure you catch more episodes of DSTV Roundtable with me, Donovan Goliath. And cut. Yo! <laughs> Thank you, boss.